Ryan Trahan helped this guy's channel go viral. From asking Ant-Man for an ant tattoo, to making a homemade jetpack, to building a suitcase go-kart, Preston Goes is the ideal story of an up-and-coming YouTuber. But it wasn't always that way. You see, just one and a half years ago, Preston only had a few hundred subscribers and was struggling to make a living off of YouTube. So today, I'm gonna tell you how this man went from getting almost no views to going viral because of a literal song about Ryan Trahan. This is the story of Preston Goes. On December 25th, 2006, Preston received a Christmas present that changed his life. It was a new video camera. Yeah. I remember my parents asking me like, oh, what do you want for Christmas? And I was like, I want a, I want a camera. And they were like, why do you want a camera? And I was like, because I want to upload videos to this website called YouTube. And then they asked, what is YouTube? It was a brand new platform at the time. But all Preston wanted to do was make videos and upload them to YouTube. Preston filmed everything from the beginning of high school all the way through college. I was kind of like the the g guy in the friend group who was always like uh -huh. with the camera making videos. I feel like we all have that friend. It seemed like he had found his passion. This passion eventually got him a job to film drone footage for people, and that branched out to other film-based jobs. He'd also became friends with another person on Instagram that had a similar job as he did. His name was Eric Decker. You see, Eric made an Instagram post talking about how he was hired and had backstage passes to film at a concert, and how he was going to meet this well-respected videographer named Roy Kramer. Preston was a big fan of Roy's work, so he sent Eric a DM asking him if he could come along and help with video production. And he DMs me, we'd never met, and he's like, dude, I'm actually just going. Uh, to sneak in, I don't have, I don't have a pass. Oh um, god. It was at this moment that Preston and Eric became friends. Preston didn't know how much the start of this friendship would impact his life down the line. Around this time, Preston had begun posting on his channel that is now known as Preston Goes. The channel was mostly there as sort of a creative outlet for Preston. The videos didn't really get that many views, it was still something that he just did for fun. But he had this small desire to go all in but he ignored that desire because he didn't think that it was even possible for him. He thought it was just some silly pipe dream. 2019 rolls around and Preston was living in a house with a bunch of his friends, including Eric Decker. It was a pretty normal life. Both Preston and Eric had different film-based jobs. Then one day, Eric came to Preston telling him that he thinks that he's going to go all in on YouTube. And eventually he was like, dude, I think I'm gonna try to do YouTube. And I was like, what? Like, are you gonna be like David Dobrik? Like, what do you, what do you mean? Preston thought it was a joke at first, but then Eric started uploading on a channel called Eric, one video after the next. Then by 2020, Eric absolutely exploded and became one of the most successful YouTubers of all time. While all of this was going on, Preston was in the background witnessing all of it. He'd gotten to see up close and personal what the job of being a YouTuber actually looked like. He was able to see that it was actually possible and that becoming a YouTuber could actually be done. At this time, Eric and Preston's lives had changed a ton. Both of them had moved to LA and Preston just got married so he moved in with his wife, while Eric was grinding weekly videos and living with his editor. One day, Preston came to his wife Katie and told her about his desires to do YouTube full time, but also how he didn't know how they were going to stay financially afloat if he was actually going to try this. My wife is the best. She like <laughs> believes in me more than myself. And when I told her about, hey, like, I think I want to do the YouTube thing, she's yeah. like, you got to do it. Katie told him to not worry about it and that she would get a job to support him both if he was going to try to pursue YouTube. So on the 22nd of May, 2022, Preston posted a video on his channel with only 600 subscribers, publicly stating that he's going 100% all in on YouTube. He also set a subscriber goal for himself, 100,000 subscribers before his 30th birthday, giving him seven months to achieve his goal. The way he planned to achieve this goal was by posting 30 quality videos before his birthday. And although 30 was a lot, he had countless hours of experience making videos from previous jobs. But 100k subscribers is still a milestone that very few people actually get to. So he needed to get to grinding. The first video that Preston posted was a video of him staying overnight inside the world's largest tree. He worked super hard on the video, and it didn't even do that good. So he made another video titled, I faked my proposal to girlfriend in a stadium. That video turned out the same way, only a few views. Preston 
and grinded out a few more videos, but they were all performing the same way. He was already 9 videos in and had barely gained any traction. He began feeling insane. Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and expecting a different result. So he needed to try something different. Preston began coming up with ideas for his next video. He wanted to make a video that would actually grow his audience, so he began posting YouTube Shorts. And the reason was because not only were they 10 times easier to make, but they also got 10 times the views. Preston knew this because he had posted a few shorts on his channel a little while back and realized that the views were so much higher. The idea was to grow on shorts then bring that audience over to longform since longform views pay much more money than shorts views do. So he posted a short titled, I Cracked an Egg Underwater. The short performed way better than any of the longform videos he posted on the channel so far, but it wasn't nearly enough to get him that large of an audience. So he posted another short a few days later titled, I Own a Tesla Cybertruck. This video right off the bat started gaining much more views than any other video he had posted on the channel. It started gaining thousands of views, then hundreds of thousands, then millions. The video eventually went on to get 39 million views. The video pushed Preston's channel from around 1,000 subscribers to well over 200k. He had actually achieved his goal of hitting 100,000 subscribers before his 30th birthday. After this, Preston decided to post a long form video because he had already built up an audience on shorts. So he made and posted a video titled, My Homemade Robot is a Huge Threat to Uber Eats. And surprisingly, the video only ended up with a few thousand views. Preston didn't know what to think. No one really cared about his video. And although a few thousand views was much better than his other long form videos, he expected so many more. He had reached a goal and gotten 100,000 subscribers, and he even got the YouTube plaque. But it was all worth nothing if no one actually wanted to watch his videos. He needed to build a real audience, and the only way to do that was to go viral on longform. Going viral on longform is 10 times harder than going viral on shorts. So he needed to get creative if he was going to actually pull this off. He had a crazy idea to handcuff himself to Eric for 24 hours. This is called social hacking. I explained it in the Mr. Beast video, but when you have a famous name or topic in your videos, then you can attract the audience of that person or topic. So using Eric's name inside of a video would be a genius idea. But when he posted the video, it performed relatively the same way as the last one but he just began working on the next one. This video was taking advantage of the VR trend that was done by a few other YouTubers, but this video performed relatively the same way. Although these videos were not performing nearly as good as he wanted them to, he was having a blast making them. And it was like this crazy roller coaster ride that was exciting one day, then feeling like he was crazy the other. He was having the time of his life. For Preston's next video, he thought of this crazy idea. You see, Ant-Man Quantumania was premiering within the next 14 days. So Preston thought it would be a good idea for Ant-Man, aka Paul Rudd, to give him a tattoo promoting the movie. This was a banger idea. But there was only one problem. How was some random YouTuber gonna get in contact with one of the biggest actors on the planet? The answer was simple. Preston, Katie, and Preston's friend Daniel were gonna post funny reels asking Paul Rudd to give Preston an ant tattoo. They were planning to post one reel a day, hoping that one of them would pop off and get a few million views. So with the plan set, they began posting reels. On the first day, they didn't gain that many views, but a few days in, they started gaining some traction. But sadly, Paul Rudd wasn't aware of what was going on because he didn't have any social media. So they started directing attention to another actor in the Ant-Man movie, Katherine Newton. She was the person who played Ant-Man's daughter in the movie. She was also on social media. So Preston made a reel giving a proposition to Katherine, but she wasn't responding to any of the reels. They didn't really know if they were wasting their time at this point or if they were actually onto something. All hope seemed lost until Preston was sent a DM from an anonymous source telling him that he would give him tickets to access the red carpet. This was crazy because if he were to get his hands on these tickets, there would be a chance that he would actually get to talk to Paul Rudd in person. This was a once in a lifetime opportunity, so they needed to make it count.
They started searching for something to give to Paul Rudd that would make him remember the moment. They ended up finding an inside joke from a podcast that very few people would know about. And he's smitten with her immediately because she's wearing a, t a sweatshirt that just says, uh, Beignet done that. <laughs> they put that joke on a sweatshirt that was super soft and they were going to give it to Paul Rudd at the red carpet. But not just that, but they were also going to put Preston's contact information in the pocket of the sweatshirt. So now the only thing left to do was to follow the instructions of the anonymous source. They told Preston to wait in the back of the press line and that the anonymous source would bring Paul Rudd in Preston's direction. So Preston got all dressed up and drove to the red carpet. Preston had never felt this nervous in his life. He had put so much time and energy into this. It had to work. So he pulled up and followed the instructions that the anonymous source gave him. And what happened was shocking. What's up, man? Preston. Hi, Preston. Uh, YouTuber. Very excited awesome. for the movie. Oh, thanks. Yeah, uh, I can tell you were in a tux. Oh, my gosh. I, I, I went for it, dude. You did. Uh, question number one. Yep. If the mood was right, would you ever consider maybe tattooing someone to promote this movie? Would I ever consider tattooing someone? I, well, I think... Sure, I would, but I mean, I would think that the person getting tattooed is the one making the real sacrifice. Oh, yeah. You know what, what I mean? Yeah, totally, totally. Not just because they'd be getting a tattoo, but getting a tattoo from me, who has never given a person a tattoo ever in my life. I feel like I would enjoy it. Yeah? Yeah. Are you asking me to give you a tattoo? I, and, uh, hypothetically? Where? Like uh, right here? Yeah, tramp, ant stamp? Yeah. Ant stamp? An ant stamp. Oh. Oh, and I, I made your gif. Hey. Oh my god. Right? Deep, deep, deep. cut. <laughs> By the way, a really nice quality hoodie. How nice is that, hey, huh? Oh my gosh. My friend Dan Etheridge will get a real kick out of that. <laughs> and yay, done. Uh, it's amazing. Awesome, dude. Thank you so thank much. You. This is what I'm going to tattoo on, yes, you know, yes. on your neck. Oh my god. Uh, there's a little note in there for you. There is? No pressure, no oh, pressure. Thanks. I hope it didn't fall. Yeah, no, no, no. Awesome, thank you so much. Preston had never felt a high like this ever in his life. This was the craziest thing to ever happen to him. And although Paul Rudd didn't exactly say yes to the tattoo, he didn't say no. So they continued to post reels promoting their cause. They knew that Paul Rudd had their contact information. They just needed to flatter him into doing it. But there was only eight days left until the premiere. They needed something to happen if they were actually going to pull this off. Then they realized that... Paul Rudd was going to be flying to London for a world promotion tour, so they weren't actually going to be able to pull this tattoo thing off like they thought. Which is what a bunch of losers would say because they bought two tickets to London. This was scary because money was already kinda tight, so after they purchased these tickets, there was no turning back. Either they achieved their goal or failed miserably. They flew to London and stayed with a few college friends while they were down there. The plan was simple. All they wanted to do was to get in front of Paul Rudd on the red carpet one more time. And to make the scenario even more crazy, they were going to bring a tattoo gun with them. But there was only one question. How were they going to get onto the red carpet? They didn't even have any tickets this time. So they took a picture of one of the security guards passes and printed out their own versions. They were so close. All they needed to do was get in contact with them one more time and receive the ant tattoo. But when they entered onto the red carpet, the security guard that they had seen earlier recognized them. They had no choice but to get out of there. All of this work put down the drain. They were so close, yet so far. Preston spent a little bit of time editing the video when he got back to the US. It was his best video up to this point, and he was super proud of it. It was the first time that he had ever went 100% all in on an idea. And even though he didn't get to his goal, he did pull off some crazy stuff in the video. When he posted the video, it performed relatively the same way as all the others, getting only a few thousand views. Although it was the best video he had ever posted, it wasn't even good enough to perform better than the Uber Eats video. There was no time to feel sad though. He had just hit his one year anniversary on YouTube, so Preston made a video talking about everything that happened. Preston knew that he couldn't keep doing YouTube if he stayed on this trajectory. He really needed a viral video. So he got to grinding creating a new video titled, My Homemade Jetpack Shouldn't Work So Well. Then right after that, he made another video titled, I Built Swiss Army Crocs. Both of these videos really didn't do that well, but little did Preston know the next video that he would post would change the trajectory of his life forever. 
Preston was at his friend Tyler's house. Yes, the Tyler that's in all the ARAC videos and has almost 2 million subscribers. Preston was running video ideas past Tyler and a few other friends. Nothing really caught their attention until the last one. There's all of my friends around and, uh, and then I'm like, okay, uh, and then the 12th idea, um, like make a song about like Ryan Trahan. Tyler thought this was a banger idea because not only did Tyler have a video on his channel surprising Ryan Trahan with over a million views, but Ryan was doing another Penny series within a couple of days. So if he was ever to do this video, now would be the time. Go. You have to go now. Start doing it because he's going to start his series in like a few days. Preston had a sample of the song, but if he was going to send it to Ryan, he wanted the song to be a lot better, so he immediately began grinding. The end goal was to have Ryan use the song for the outro of the finale of the Penny series. Preston, Katie, and Daniel wrote some lyrics for the song and thought they were fire. Then Preston recorded them. They finished recording and editing the song, but the hardest part was yet to come. How were they going to get the attention of Ryan in time for the Penny series? It's not like Preston was best friends with Ryan, so the best way to get in contact with Ryan was to send him a cold DM on Instagram with the song attached, then wait for Ryan's response. The next morning, they had no response from Ryan. That was expected by them because the chances of someone with millions of followers seeing a cold DM was little to none. So they had a backup plan. You see, the version of the song that they sent to Ryan was about 20 seconds long. So they were going to create a full length version of the song and make a music video to go along with it. They purchased a mannequin and dressed them up to look like Ryan Trahan, then filmed the music video. Preston sat down and began editing the music video. When the craziest thing happened, Ryan saw Preston's DM and he responded. I, oh, he responded. He responded. He responded. He responded. I saw it. I saw it. He responded. He responded. Oh my gosh. I'm nervous. Dude, I I'm, nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. <gasps> oh. It says two new messages. So, two. Two messages. So, here we go. Oh my goodness, bro, I'm obsessed. We're gonna put this in the finale. LMAO! Oh my god! Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> this was the craziest thing to ever happen to Preston, but he had no time to celebrate because he wanted to get the video out before the finale of the Penny series. So I just edit, gr like grinding, grinding on this edit. I know, I, so in my head, I'm like, okay, I have to upload my video on the finale day. I was doing a seven day series. I have to upload my video on the seventh day. And somehow got that video uploaded one minute after he uploads his finale episode. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, we'll see. Right off the bat, the video started performing much better than all his other videos. Instead of getting a few thousand views, it was getting a few thousand views an hour. This was the best performing video that he had ever had, and it didn't stop. It kept going, and within a few days, it hit a million views. The music video was also performing super well, because Ryan Trahan posted it on his community tab. This was the success that he had been striving for ever since he began YouTube one and a half years ago. You see, this wasn't the only video that blew up on his channel, because this video ended up pushing people to go watch the Jetpack video. So that video ended up taking off as well and getting over 4 million views. This Ryan Trahan video will always be known as the video that ended up kickstarting Preston's career as a YouTuber. Subscribe to this man right now, everyone. Everyone watching, subscribe to him right yes. now. <laughs> Do that, please. Yeah. Okay. Wandering, 3D. 